That's I I find that fascinating. Do you think you are someone? Correct me if I'm wrong. Your, your mother is from Ireland and your father from Yorkshire, England. Correct? Yes. Yeah. Uh, right. And obviously, your uh, your time in the Galapagos. You've you you have a very international perspective. Do, do you feel? Uh, do you feel there's something in the American character, essentially in American exceptionalism, that uh, that creates this narrative of 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 greatness and uh, uh, invulnerability in a way that makes it difficult for the American character to to let go of their identity based on beliefs, to let go of uh, success. Earlier, you talked about. I, I wrote yeah. it down because I loved it. I, I speak to a lot of folks at, at at rallies. I go to MAGA events, and you said people don't feel like they're losing the argument. It feels like you're dying, yes. uh, and and that's what I'm witnessing. It, people people will ask me, uh, do those folks not see the the logic logical disparity in the conversation? Do they not see uh, that? People are being hypocritical in their beliefs. You're like, it's it's not a conversation about what people no. see. It's 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 about who it's about their identity. And these things are connected to who they are. And if you poke a hole in that, you're poking a hole in them as humans. And I yes. I, I wonder from your perspective, is that something that's uniquely uh, a, an American trait and or flaw? Well, you know, um, we human beings have always really believed very strange things. And usually we have one coercive power in place that tells you, you will only believe these particular strange things, you know, <laughs> because we don't want a civil war. Yeah. And uh, that, that ghettoization of beliefs as, uh, as metastatized and uh, even more so in the States. I'm not someone who can answer exactly why, why it's happened to such an exaggerated degree in the United States. I mean, Britain has the same internet in Ireland, but it, it's not atomized in the same way the States has. Every culture has really strange things it believes about itself because of historical trauma, whereby they, at one time, they had to believe them in order to survive. Uh, I didn't mean to say they were true. So you had a lot of beliefs which were formed around the revolution and the separation from Britain, you know, which people needed to believe in order to make that separation, but they're not necessarily true. So the idealization of the constitution, which is a kind of shibboleth and uh, taboo, you almost can't say, but uh, it could be that the, uh, that the most flawed thing about <laughs> this is, <laughs> This, I'll probably regret saying this, but it could be that the most flawed thing about North America is its constitution. Whereas most people are brought up to believe that that's the opposite, that's true. And that's, that needs to be revealed. How we would do it, I don't know. I think it's impossible in this, in this, uh, in this time to, to redo it. But at least the first step would be understanding uh, how flawed uh, inheritances. So Britain has really strange things it believes about itself. Uh, Ireland has really strange things it had to believe about itself. So the, f the first step is stepping out from your cultural mantle. And uh, I'm sure John uh, knows how difficult that would be as a politician where you're held in some ways uh, in a claw-like grip by the mythological inheritance of the country. Yeah. There are certain things you can't say as a politician that I can say or Jordan can say yeah, because they touch off an allergic reaction in the culture because of what you, what you represent. Yeah. Um, I have a poem I've done in my latest uh, book called Still Possible. It's called The Edge You Carry With You. And it looks at the, at the trauma you had as uh, every human being has traumas as a child, you know, the traumas you carry with you that into every conversation uh, to one degree or another. Um, whether, we're, whether we're mature enough to face up to our previous traumas or the traumas we've inflicted on other people. I've always, you know, really disliked bullies. Uh, um, but I've just been examining the one time in my life when I was probably 13 or so where I was a bully with one boy yeah, and trying to face up to that and apologize. You know, the, I don't know where the boy is now, I don't, but 
there's some kind of necessary apology I have to make and some kind of um, some kind of compensation I have to make in my life in order to in order to uh, fully understand why I did that. Yeah. It was for a very short time. It was just for a week, actually. But I, uh, but I still carry it with me, actually, to this day, and and wonder why, why I actually inflicted that pain on that on that boy. I mean, it wasn't physical pain. It was more. It was. It was. It was emotional pain. Yeah. And uh, most of the rest of my adolescent, I was defending people against bullies. But that I had my own hand in it. And it's only years later that I'm actually coming to face up to that. Yeah, David, is is it possible? Would would you share that poem with us? Is that possible? Uh, yes, if you just give me a minute to find it here. I don't have it in my memory because it's a new poem. Mm-hmm. As, as David's looking for it, I'd like to follow up on that with a question to the governor. I think, David, I think you you bring up something very interesting. Yes. There is like there's. Uh, there's a privilege to vulnerability and uh, and governor. That's something that perhaps in a position of power, we don't see, uh, y- you can't be that vulnerable. Is, is, is there an inherent, I, I know your desire to be so, to, to be open and to bring a conversation to a place where you can be that open with one another. Is the political sphere even, uh, uh, is, is, is it ready enough or is, is there possibility lie in that as a, a place where people can be open and vulnerable? Yeah, there, yes, of course. But, but you got to understand, and I've been, yes. I've been in media, I've written books, yes. uh, I've been in business, I'm in business now. And so I observe people across all these, all the, the spectrums of life. Yes. You know, Jordan, in my job, I used to meet with people who lost sons, daughters, or spouses in war. And we'd sit, and I would tell them the story of my loss, and sometimes I would cry. I don't mean, you know, boo-hoo cry, but I would cry and be emotionally upset. And I had, you know, a great emotional victories, too, where yes. it brought the same type of emotion kind of on the reverse side. No, I think the more that we can say, and, you know, we, we've been into this the last couple times we've spoken— about recognizing the, the, the intrinsic value of another human being. And when you open yourself up, not always, because they're shy too, and they're afraid too, but there's more a chance of, of their being open to open up. And it's such a great experience. I've been set free. So these things just don't bother me. You know, I'm not afraid to have somebody think I'm too upset or silly or whatever. But I think that is one of the answers to say, look, I know you have fears and I want to connect with your fears. I want to understand you. 